Welcome to part two of our introduction to dependency injection. In this episode, we will attempt to demonstrate how to use abstractions, for example, interfaces, to represent dependencies, and then we'll demonstrate a manual form of dependency injection that makes for a very flexible service class. Okay, we've created a new version of our messaging application, and we're looking at the revised message service class. But before we examine this in detail, let's start by examining the old version. So here's the old version from part one. And you'll notice that um, our dependent components um, are very specific. GUI message input, console message output. Uh, they're instantiated here in the class. And uh, we have a very rigid um, application because should the input or output need to be changed, um, you would have to revise this source code. So now let's see how we can eliminate those dependencies by using abstraction. So here we have the input and output properties just as we did before, input and output, but in the new version, they're based on interfaces. So message input is an interface, as is message output, also an interface. And these interfaces are abstractions of the kind of input and output objects we want to use as dependent objects. So you can see that um, we can add the dependencies either by passing in the input and output objects to the constructor, or we also have setter methods for input and output that we can use. But in any case, the actual objects are instantiated elsewhere, and they're injected into this Ob into this class as dependent components. So now let's examine what some of these look like. Here's an example of an input component. Notice it, we call it random message provider. It implements the message input interface. And this one simply retrieves a random string um, and returns that um, in the get message method. Now the output implementation we're going to begin with is GUI message output. So it, it implements the output interface, and again, it, it, it um, provides output, in this case, to a GUI Japshin pane message dialog. So this class is very flexible, the service class. And the very um, rigid, um, strong dependencies are gone. This is a concrete class, message service, but it's not dependent on another concrete class. It's only dependent on abstractions. And that makes it very flexible because we can pass in any implementation of message input and any implementation of message output. So let's see how that works. Here's our startup class. As you can see, we're implementing a service class uh, instance. And then we're calling the setter methods, although we could have just as easily call, uh, passed these into the constructor, but in this case, we're initializing a random message provider and a GUI message output uh, object, and we're passing them into these methods, effectively injecting the dependency at runtime. The important thing to understand is that if we change the type of provider uh, input or output object that we want to use, we still have to edit some code here. But what's critical is that the code over here does not have to be edited if we make that change. And that makes this class very flexible and very portable. We could use this in other programs, some of which may not even depend on a random message provider. And that makes this much more flexible. So let's see how it runs. And here comes our output. So it randomly picked a message and I'll put it to the GUI. Now let's change that. Let's change this to, oh, let's use a GUI message input. So instead of a random message input, random message provider, we'll use a GUI message input. And for output, we'll use console message output. Now, again, I only edited the startup class. I have not made any changes to the service class. And yet, with that small change, you'll see that the program 
adapts automatically to these new input and output dependencies. So here we go, we'll run it. Here comes the input. And you'll see the output goes to the council just as expected. So that's a manual form of dependency injection. We are manually injecting instances of the input and output abstractions uh, into the message service object. Uh, there's another related design principle called the dependency inversion principle. And in that states that a high-level class, in this case the service class, should depend on abstractions, not on concrete classes. And that's exactly what our service class does. In our next episode, part three, we'll look at doing another form of manual dependency injection using what's called the service locator design pattern. See you then.